Hi, happy new year. Today's video, I'm gonna share all the goals I set for myself this year and how I organize myself to help realize my goals, I guess. I use Notion, so I'm just gonna kind of take you through pages I created on Notion, not only to look forward to the new year, but also to reflect on the past year, which I think is just as important when you're setting goals. Take a look at how you've changed throughout the year, what works for you, what didn't work so well. If you're not familiar with Notion, it's literally the best organizing app. I'm very much a paper girl. I like to have my paper agenda, my paper journal, Journal, but as soon as I started using Notion that kind of changed I still have some things I'd rather do on paper But a lot of my day-to-day -day planning and organizing projects and all that stuff I like to do on Notion just because it's so aesthetically pleasing. It's so clean this year I used it a lot for writing outlines for essays and all that stuff And it was just so pretty that I wanted to work on it. I like having everything in one place This is my entire mind in an app. Lastly as much as it's aesthetic and all that It's also super personalizable. Is that a word? Personalized? Picking out emojis and just making it your own coming up with page ideas is something I've always loved doing in my journal And it obviously translates to notion as well where I just love to sit down and think about new Pages I can make in my notion to organize my life better and get me started on stuff Writing things down has always been something that pushes me to go and get stuff done If you are struggling a little bit with staying on top of your things and getting yourself to go through with projects or goals that you set I Definitely recommend writing stuff down and if you're not someone who likes to take pen to paper, which I know is super common, then I definitely recommend downloading Notion. You can use the link in my description. It's free, which is also great. Last time I mentioned that I was still looking for a quote that I felt resonated with me, something that I would want to see. I just saw this quote, which is not anything special, but I just like it. There's no must in art because art is free. Yeah, I don't really know. I just liked it. So this is my homepage, by the way. If you want to see the whole layout of my Notion, you should go watch my other video. Today, I'm just going to share the new pages I created or additions to pages that are really more in line with like the new year. So I'm gonna start with goals. So I have this set up like this. I have monthly goals, then I have daily goals, and then I have over the year. My monthly goals are very quantitative. Be able to post weekly or bi-weekly on YouTube, more like work stuff. One leisure book every month. This past semester, I already had that implemented by the classes that I was taking. I was already reading a book every week and a half, kind of. So that was great. But now that I'm going on exchange, I'm gonna have to force myself to read. I think that's like probably on every single person's list of goals for the new year is to read more. So I like to make it quantitative because it kind of pushes me to do that. Related to that, I have this section called reads where I had created this, this grid that I showed you in my last video, just listing all the books that I was reading, the author, the score I give it, the status, and some thoughts. This already was like motivating me to read more because I wanted to fill in the rating and give my thoughts on it. I added also this list of must reads. Oh, I didn't have a cover kind of a book list and I made it a checklist so that I can check things off so it's satisfying. Checking things off is my favorite thing to do on Notion. This is just a way for me to kind of motivate myself to read more by making it a checklist. I'm just that way. I'm a list girl through and through. Milk fed by Melissa Broder. I actually got this for Christmas which I'm so excited about. It was presented in my literature class and I immediately knew I wanted to read it just because the storyline seems like something that I would enjoy. No one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood which also seems really interesting. It's very contemporary issues of social media and stuff, which I like to read. Here by Richard McGuire, which looks like the coolest book of all time. Of Women in Salt, I've heard so much about. Claire and the Sun by Kasuo Ishiguro. Le Soleil des Corta by Laurent Goudy. And Charlotte by David Fuentinos. I want to read French books too because I have been off my French game. I feel like I'm losing my French because I go to school in English. I only really speak French with my family. And I used to be so eloquent in French and now it's just bad, so I need to read in French. So those are my must-reads and it's just a way for me to motivate myself to read more by wanting to check off the list. I definitely prefer qualitative goals. I don't really know how to explain it, but there are more about like habits and stuff than like giving it a set number because I find it hard to follow through with numbers like that. Like go to the gym five times a week. You know, I just always feel like I'm never able to live up to it and then I just lose hope. So I don't love quantitative goals, except that for some of my work things, it's kind of necessary for me to set goals like that. They're that like, no, you have to, but like try to post this amount of times a month on YouTube and Instagram, just because it's kind of the rules of the game. That's not the expression. I forget the expression, but you know what I mean? It is what it is. So yeah, every month are pretty quantitative work related. Daily are the ones that I like the most because it's a lot more about self-care. I wrote journal once a week, but I put it in daily because I feel like it's something that I should try to implement every day. I do want to try to journal as much as I can because it is actually the best thing for my mental health. Whenever I'm feeling anxious and I write in my journal, it repairs everything because the way I go about things is I'll express what's giving me anxiety or is making me sad. And then I'm just a solution seeker 
soul just come up with a bunch of things that can make me feel better and I'm very optimistic when I write which is not necessarily the case when I'm just thinking do you know what I mean when I start writing and I feel myself being super negative it's like oh my god I need to flip the switch I need to flip this around and so I start writing more positively that's just the way it's always been for me so journaling is a very therapeutic and it's just an aiding tool for me then on daily I don't know why these two are on daily because I want it to be implemented into my everyday and less be like a thing that's counted every week like I said so I wrote exercise three times a week but I want it to be more of an everyday thing and I'll show you guys my habit tracker and I'll explain a bit more about that in one second and I also wrote skincare every night SPF whenever I go outside and prioritize sleep pretty easy to implement I created this other page habits tracker which is actually a template on notion a free template that you can use I kind of altered it a little bit to fit my aesthetic but for every day I have four things that I want to be able to check off at the end of the day and you can see here that the little circle gets fuller and fuller as you check off your goals which is just so satisfying but the things I want to do every day first is I called it off the phone which includes journaling or leisure reading so if I either journal or I read for pleasure then I'll check off this checkbox then I have the moving checkbox either I walk more than 10,000 steps which is something I feel like I'll be doing a lot on exchange being in a new city and all that I love to walk since I don't do that many sports it's how I get my movement in the most so I really really prioritize my walking or if I do like a little Pilates ab workout I like to do the Pilates classes on the PilatesClass.com the other one is if I run 20 minutes on the treadmill which is like if I'm actually going to the gym and working out then I have sleep that's if I get eight plus hours of sleep eight hours is usually perfect for me and then the self-care is skincare I've recently been obsessed with skincare I just love the feeling of taking care of my face and my body and just taking that time at night to wash my face do an elaborate skincare routine and go to bed feeling just like clean soft skin and then like showering moisturizing my body and then I put meditate I've never really tried to meditate or if I have it's been unsuccessful but I feel like that's something that I should try to I don't know take on this year because it really does wonders for people the other cool thing about this is you can change it from all the habits to a table view so if this is something that you prefer the look of you can decide whichever you prefer which is cool and then my goals over the year make a new good friend so I've definitely been more like a solo person these past few months I feel like I've also just kind of fell out of the university vibe it's hard to talk about this type of thing because I tend to feel bad about stuff like this because I'm very much the person that retreats from situations I don't know when I don't feel good anymore or when I just don't feel on the same wavelength as people which is like so normal in this time of our lives but for some reason I tend to like kind of beat myself down for it because everyone else seems to be having so much fun doing certain things and I just don't enjoy it do you know what I mean but I think that I've learned this year that there's nothing bad about that it's normal to go through periods of your life that you're more I guess on your own and it's important to learn to be okay on your own which was really 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 difficult for me to figure out because I spent a lot of time this semester by myself and I've always really valued my alone time and I am definitely an introvert but it can still get hard to not be like super social but then again like I didn't have the energy to be social it's weird anyway next I wrote create relationships with people from different places have friends all over the world that's always been something that I really wanted is to just have like a very diverse group of people in terms of their life stories anyone from Montreal probably relates to this but I feel like when you grow up in Montreal you know kind of everybody like it's really hard to meet people that don't know someone you know it's just a very small town like I feel like just everyone knows everyone that can be fun but I feel like I'm definitely ready to go out into the world and meet people that don't know anyone that I know and to just start fresh a little bit and I'm someone who just loves to travel so I just always find it fun to make new encounters in places all around the world that's like my favorite part of traveling except from like eating and being in the sun and relaxing so then this other thing I'm also not gonna say word for word but I do have a project I've actually been brainstorming this project since last year last year I wrote in my journal was writing ideas about it just because I was super excited about it and then it just kind of fizzled out I'm the type of person that unless I act on things right away sometimes I just will let them sit for a really long time without doing anything and I get easily overwhelmed with like all the things I'm trying to juggle so that's kind of what happened but this year I definitely want to put in some time into this project because I just think that it's very in line with my interests and I think it would be awesome to do so I created this page where I haven't yet really organized it but I'm definitely gonna work on this in the next few weeks just a page where you can organize your projects brainstorm ideas you can make a calendar planning when you're gonna do what you could share this page with anyone you're working on the project with notion is just a great platform to plan 
stuff. Next I have some work goals. I don't know why I don't like sharing my goals when it comes to my work because I just feel shy about it. It involves a lot of traveling and doing more creative stuff with my platform. I made also a list of brands that I want to work with this year so it's an extra page which is really fun because as I told you I love making checklists. I have Create Abroad Diaries when in Copenhagen so I want to come up with a creative project something that's a bit different from what I've been doing. I like storytelling. I like to create like kind of small home movies type things but I want to kind of elevate it or do it with a twist. I just need to come up with a more specific idea of what I want to do because I'm obviously going to be documenting a lot of my time there so I want to come up with something original. Feel free to share anything you'd like to see from me this year. And then while abroad I want to prioritize social activities and be a yes woman because like I kind of mentioned this semester I was a no woman through and through. I went out maybe twice. I rarely left my house except to go to the library and I'm not mad about it. It's just I definitely do not want that to be my energy going into exchange which it definitely won't be. I think I needed this kind of reset semester to feel good about leaving. So I wrote school takes the back burner because it doesn't count. Just make sure to do well enough but time will be spent on work and exploring rather than perfecting essays. I read every essay I submit probably 20 times before submitting it. I am kind of obsessive about stuff like that. I think that exchange will really really help me deal with that side of myself because there's no way I'm gonna be doing that on exchange. Like I'm gonna be in Europe. I'm not gonna be sitting in front of my computer editing my essay to perfection. And then attend all classes and take vigorous notes to facilitate doing well while wasting no time. That just applies for any school I do. Go to class, listen, take the best notes that you can, write down everything the prof says. That's how I do well in school to be honest. So I'm gonna just keep that up in Copenhagen. It's gonna make it so much easier for me to do well enough, like I said, without having to study all the time and having to catch up. Writing these goals down helps me just approach the new year with positivity and motivation to just improve my lifestyle. Next thing I added to is my vision board. This is just really fun. I took a bunch of pictures from Pinterest, things I just, when I saw I was like, it just gave me a good vibe. I liked the aura of the photo, the look of it, whatever. And then I have sub themes. So here I have travels, just all these photos give me peace of mind. I love it. Just the beach and the reading on the beach, being in a bikini and somewhere warm and champagne or white wine with a view on literally that's the Amalfi Coast, say no more. It just makes me happy. Then I have work business endeavors. I'm not saying I want a runway walk, by the way. I definitely don't. It's more going to shows that I think is so much fun. And then yeah, just like being able to dress up for events, which is the most fun thing ever. Getting to meet people from all over. I definitely need to add a bit more to that though, because it's kind of surface level. Then I have creativity, quality writing. I just have this cool bookshelf and this book journal and this girl looking through books. So one of my goals this year, but it's like just always been a goal for me is to always improve my writing and be creative and that can be linked to every aspect of my life whether it be in my school just because most of my assignments and stuff is like creative writing essay writing it applies there and then I also want to apply it obviously to YouTube and also to my secret project and I have a good sense of style these are just the most random photos ever but I just like them so why not I'm always trying to improve my style healthy balanced lifestyle peace of mind I'm definitely entering more of a like healthy era just because of how it makes me feel so amazing and I'm someone that easily feels not great so I need to do everything I can to just take care of myself so that I can feel the best that I can I feel like but these photos just kind of emanate healthiness and just like being on the beach and sleeping in the sun and then like pretty food and like healthy stuff I don't know very random then meaningful relationships deep and fun connection it's just best friend photos makes me happy and then lots of eating out and cocktail nights this is a non-negotiable in terms of this year in the summer I've started going out a lot more and I've just developed such an appreciation for cocktails and good food and it's honestly my favorite thing to do go grab drinks with friends just enjoy a good cocktail Copenhagen okay this is like really irritating me why is it not inside this oh there we go so first I have my bucket list I made a bucket list of the things I want to do in Copenhagen getting excited about things even if you're not like going to a new place do this for your hometown do this for your new college or the school you're going to the new city you're visiting yeah just 
your life in general like I said activities these are a bunch of things I saw online of museums and just sightseeing and there's the overall things that I want to do when I'm on exchange rent a boat and swim off of it get a group of friends to do that with would be the most fun thing ever I want to swim in a cave I want to find my own little private rock or beach which is so easy to find in the south of France I feel like when I went this summer we could see them everywhere and then just journal and swim alone have a, just a little solo excursion go to the fashion weeks in Europe since I'm gonna be in Europe I feel like it's just the perfect opportunity to do that stuff and then I wrote down places I want to visit which I have to add so many more like Amsterdam I have London Dublin Barcelona I want to go to Amsterdam obviously I'm gonna go to Paris again oh I want to go to Berlin okay this is like my budgeting my monthly cap I'm gonna try to budget just because I've never lived on my own and then write down my expenses I already booked my flight to Dublin so that's my first expense so I'm just like gonna keep track of my spending so that I can stay on top of it and kind of just track just because I like counting stuff and keeping track I'm just kind of high maintenance like that then packing I just wrote down a bunch of things that I need to pack every time I think about something I just write it down so that I don't forget and then the last thing on Copenhagen is a list of restaurants the comprehensive list of all the restaurants I've seen on Instagram I just wrote them all down when they looked good because I want to eat out all the time it's my favorite thing like I said 20 times okay and then aside from goals more for reflecting on 2022 and looking forward to 2023 I'm just gonna share all the things that I did last year because I still haven't done these yet and I'm gonna do it this week I'm just gonna give you prompts you can make your own pages in notion or write on paper if you're more a paper person which I am for this type of stuff when it comes to writing down thoughts doing reflection I really prefer paper but I know a lot of people prefer typing do what you will with this the questions I asked myself last year to do a review on the year were what is the most important lesson you learned this year reflect on what are the hardships you encountered what lesson was learned from either a mistake or that hardship then what is the best thing that happened so what is something that you will remember this year for it's hard to pinpoint one thing but they're definitely like relationships I formed that are just so dear to me that I'm so grateful for just like reflect on what was it this year that made you happy I think that making those reflections are essential to forming goals because it gets you to think oh what is it really that makes me happy what was your favorite moment it's kind of like repetitive but I guess I just really like to harp on the positive so my favorite moment this would be more specific to like an exchange with a friend or someone you care about or an outing the moment you spent with someone I think it's an important exercise because it gets me to recognize the people especially that I'm grateful for which sometimes I tend to not forget but kind of just take for granted I think it's really easy to do that so I really like to remind myself of those things what are you most proud of accomplishing this year this can be definitely something more concrete like acing a course if that's something you care about or you know having a project come to fruition or really coming out of your comfort zone to try something new. What was the best decision you took? Either if you had a conundrum and you had a big decision to make or if you were just spontaneous with something, reflect on that. Or even something a bit harder like letting someone go or putting yourself first, as cheesy as that may sound, is definitely something nice to reflect on. How did you fail? So as much as it's fun to reflect on all the great things you accomplished and good feelings, it's also just as important to take a moment to think about oh what could I have done better this year personally I have so many things on that list I think it's probably my biggest answer and it's not really meant to be like I fucked up on this front and I suck for it it's more like you know I could have done this better but now I know for the future so it's more of a like learning exercise but I think it's so important to recognize that like I said to establish better goals for the future and become a better person how are you different than a year ago this is my favorite one I always think who was I a year ago like what was I doing what were my goals I like to read back on old goals what were my like priorities what was I most excited about all these little things and then I just kind of explain how I've changed and it's so nice to do I do this on my birthday but I think that it's great to do it in the new year too is just like write a letter to your future self and I always write a letter encouraging my future self it may be cheesy to some people but personally it makes me feel so good to read letters from my past self it makes me so emotional too which I love like it's just awesome to do. I remember last year a big thing that I was like oh my gosh I've changed so much was being a bit more carefree with things. In high school in CJEP like I only cared about one thing really and that was school and then when I got to university I just was exposed to such a different group of people that really helped me be more carefree. So that was something that I really liked last year and that I talked about in my journal. Then I have what would you do differently if 
if you could this is not really a thing to like list out regrets it's more like a live and learn thing so it's more oh this is a mistake i made and this is how i will not make that mistake again in the future i just like doing those types of prompts and i wrote who had the biggest impact on your life this year this is like my favorite i really really think it's so important to recognize the people in your life and be grateful for them and that's definitely something that's become more clear to me in the past few months recognize the people who love you who are there for you and be grateful and show that you're grateful to them so that's like i said something that i've not always been super good at growing a bit older and being so close to leaving the nest has made me realize just how much my parents do for me and care for me biggest impact on you also can be like a teacher a mentor that just pushed you to do something different or that inspired you to study something different I know I experienced that having a teacher just kind of helped me figure out what I wanted to study that really really just made my life take a 180 and it can also be a partner best friend reflect on that and then send them a text how do you describe this year in five words this is also just a fun little exercise last year I wrote change acceptance belonging fun and love then another Another thing I like to do, I write down categories and then I fill them with answers. That's a really bad explanation, but I'll just tell you what I did. I had new friends I've made, fun people I met that I like, my favorite movie, my favorite show, my favorite book I've consumed. For example, last year, my favorite movie was, oh, I didn't write a movie. I wrote The Ten Seasons of The Walking Dead, Season 3 of You, and A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. I really liked reading that book. Next category is places I went, so I just listed out the travels I did, like the places I visited. Fave song I discovered last year was Breeze by Dramango Dreaming. What is this year? My favorite song, Mariella by Leon Bridges or Texas Sun. Qualities I've acquired. So I wrote like more laid back, more spontaneous, and I had definitely more confidence last year than I ever had before. Boys I've liked, which is just fun to list. New skills, your first like the first time you've tried anything or done anything your mental state so how you're feeling mentally an exciting purchase you made throughout the year and then what goals have you achieved so that's definitely a time where you go back on your goals from the year before and just kind of read through what you had set for yourself and write the ones that you've achieved and like how you've achieved them something else i mentioned like i don't really know anything about tarot to be very honest but i do definitely believe in its powers and it's something that's so interpretable that you can really Really just take anything from it which I love every new year I do my tarot reading and I write down every card I get for every month so I pick 13 cards one for January through December and one for the whole year and then I write down what the card says in my journal and I do a review every month or a reflection on it I think it's just a great exercise to just reflect on every month it's not like oh did this thing happen because it's so broad it's like discovery about yourself like it's very broad and like I said interpretable so it's just a nice exercise to force you you, well not force you but to encourage you to take a moment every month to reflect on the month and how you feel that reading has translated into real life i just love doing it it makes me feel really good and then getting excited for 2022 aside from listing goals i also wrote down some questions who do you want to spend more time with in 2022 pretty straightforward but it could be a friend could be parents family i know that that's something for me then what skills do you want to learn improve or master which personal quality do you want to develop or strengthen then. last year i wrote to be more generous with my time what do you want your everyday life to be like so this can just be a sketch of your ideal day personally like i mentioned in my goals my everyday would include like those self-care habits and like good sleep and being active if you're applying to like a school for next year then you can manifest and imagine yourself at that campus which habits do you want to change cultivate or get rid of last year i wrote spend less time in bed work outside my bedroom because i would literally write all my essays do all my work in my bed and this year I didn't do it once because it's the worst like sometimes I'll edit in my bed but if I'm writing an essay or whatever I'm doing it downstairs journaling like continue journaling exercise regularly checking in on my friends more often just little habits like that how do you want to remember 2022 when you look back on it 20 years from now this is also great like if you believe in manifesting which I do it works to write down these things it really brings them into your life what is your number one goal for 2022 that can be like out of all your goals what's the one thing that you care the most about that you're most in intent on realizing what are you most excited about diving into what do you want to leave behind in 2022 so what's something that you feel is kind of weighing you down that you really just want to leave you're done with that
what do you want the overarching theme for 2022 to be it kind of comes back to what i was saying before i think it was like relationships prioritizing the people in my life over my other stuff yeah because that's what makes me happiest and then another thing you can do in your notion is the highlight of your day every single day which is something i did in my journal for most of the year and then i kind of fell off the wagon like i stopped journaling for a while and this is super easy to do in notion with kind of the same template as the habits tracker you can just write down a line every single day highlight of your day with the best thing to happen and it just is a constant reminder to be grateful for the little things i think which is why i love that exercise yeah if you want to use any of these prompts in your notion sign up at the link in my description i hope that this inspired you to do a nice reflection and to set some goals for the new year i love the new year because it feels like a fresh slate like even though some people think it's kind of cheesy i just love it so i think just take advantage of this time to reflect on your life and set new goals it doesn't have to be from one day to the next i want to wake up and change everything i don't think that that's really effective but just to get excited about things manifest things happy new year Thank you.